bit this coat, but I wanted people to see what it looked like on and get a real feel for its sort of classic lines. And then I'm going to talk about why I built it this way and the design and the general fit. It fits like a car coat, right? And uh, it's real good for winter. This one's got a merino wool lining on it, which is lovely because it's a little bit uh, warm but smooth so it can be worn in fall and it can be worn in winter and there's enough space in it to wear a sweater underneath so you can see it's got this beautiful blue smooth Italian merino wool still see the chalk marks from the buttonholes I put in yesterday and uh, two inside pockets that you can reach into and hold your stuff and it has a very almost American European feel. So I'm going to talk about the design of this and uh, the inspiration and uh, how I came up with it. It's quite unique and uh, give you guys a real insight into the process of coming up with a car coat because believe it or not of all the designs that I've struggled with coming up with a beautiful coherent unified design it would be the car coat. Uh, and also, I'm gonna introduce everyone to Opal. Opal is our dash hound at Himmel Bros. Tanya, who does my sample shop, also has a dash hound. So we will be having Opal guest appear in our videos. RIP to Pearl, our former team mascot but this is opal and she's 12 weeks old and uh will be uh our beautiful chinook accessory so stay tuned and in about a quarter second in edit i will be in himmel headquarters discussing the chinook so uh sort of an introduction number two really important you like this video and subscribe to Himmel Bros TV because we're not getting the algorithm play we deserve. But as I said, uh, Opal is now sleeping and I am here to discuss this beauty that I made which is the Chinook Storm Jacket and this one has an add-on of a detachable fur collar. So one of the interesting components of my brand is that when I decided to develop Himmel Bros, I wanted very, very, very much to design things that no one else had designed. You know, in this world where brands just do replications of vintage pieces or they copy successful brands, and I don't mean financially successful, I just mean people who are really good at what they do, and then use cheaper processes or materials or pump out more or whatever, I really felt that if I'm going to build this art project of Himmel Bros, I wanted all unique designs, right? And I wanted to I wanted to take my history of and knowledge of jackets and build jackets that were unique. And that's not to say we or we, I, my me and my team didn't occasionally copy a, a jacket. Certainly we did, but even when we did that we built all fresh patterns and uh, and worked out the problematic issues in the original designs of some of those original jackets but for the most part most of my designs are from here from this noggin and my history so one of the things about building a car coat is that uh, if you're a collector like I am um, I have probably a hundred or more 1920s and 1930s vintage car coats the shawl collar ones uh, if you uh, are, are familiar with vintage jackets, would typically be a long shaped shawl collar with uh, half uh, leather facing and then sheepskin and then sheepskin lined with slash pockets, four usually, and double breasted. Uh, very early on in the 20s, there were single breasted uh, car coats. They weren't common. And part of the reason they weren't common, I imagine, is that the use of them uh, in the wind on a motorcycle or the cold a double breasted coat would be warmer and the, I, I imagine the main purpose of a car coat was warmth and protection 
And uh, if you go back to the 19, the beginning, 1900, 1905, 1910, 1890, you'll see very large exaggerated fur collars and 100% they were for warmth. And as an example of my 1880s uh, Royal Western Mounted Police Buffalo Jacket, this thing was designed to keep these Mounties warm on the prairies while they were busting uh, gold rush American heads and uh, keeping the US Cavalry out of Alberta. So I had and was presented with a unique dilemma which is how do you make something that looks cool in a car coat and is unique and is unique. It's just like how did I how do I come up with a unique look? So my idea was most of the people designing leather jackets in North America were East European Jews. And you see this inference of European design at the early, early days of North American leather jackets. And one of the typical European designs in those early days was a sort of uh, military-esque fur collar that had a very sort of conical shape, as one of my clients referred to it, an Uncle, Uncle Fester collar. But this was a very European-style collar, and you see it on... Uh, early century European jackets. So I thought, okay, well, instead of an American classic double-breasted shawl collar, of which I have endless examples, I will do a hybrid between a single-breasted, a European collar, and an American shawl collar jacket, and see if I could come up with something that makes sense, that, that makes beautiful sense. So this, this, is the Chinook that you saw me wearing at the beginning of the video, okay? Uh, I made it for my friend. He asked for venting in the back, so that's a little extra. And this is the detachable collar. And uh, it is beautiful, as I stated before, it's uh, Japanese brown horsehide. This one was custom tinted. And uh, uh, these are original old stock, uh, 36, line 36 size. 30s four hole buttons and this jacket is gorgeous right it's just gorgeous and uh i i what i wanted to really show or highlight here is the unique shape of the collar you see how it's a shawl collar but it kind of has this sort of almost nerd quality to it there's a little bit of a sort of like a in a european collar it might come down like that but it's, it's a little more of a collar, whereas in the American style shawl collars, they would be much more sort of like, I don't know how to describe it. It would be a much more vertical, vertical look like that. I've sort of created it with more of a fold, a circular fold here. But in, in this one, we have more of sort of like a, a European style collar. And we have two slash pockets with the triangular reinforcement stitching, and then two simple slash, two simple pockets with a, with a cover on the front. And I feel it's a really good look for a car coat, but where did I, I where did I come up with this pattern, this double-breasted pattern? So I'm just gonna take a minute and show you some examples of 40s and 30s car coats, okay? Um, and give you an idea of stuff I like and I didn't like and stuff I may have borrowed and not borrowed. So this is a typical 40s zipper car coat. And this uh, would be like uh, either from California, it's, a, it's probably from California, it's goatskin. And it, it's a Western style car coat. So the length is very similar, it's single breasted, but you see it has these lovely pocket uh, flaps. Now, for me, it's a little fancy, it's a little dressy, and I would never put buttons on these flaps because it just, it draws your eye to them. But this is a good example of like 40s goatskin and a sort of sporty style of car coat in the West Coast. But I thought I should show it just so you could get a, like a feel of that 40s style. And you know, you can see it's 40s because they, they sort of created venting for arm expansion and, and, and as you can see on mine there's a arm expansion vent right so 
sort of like an early version, but not so efficient or workable as like this one, which is like probably post-war. That would be like a prototype, a primitive vent on the back here. So there's, there's a good example, 40s Western style car coat. Not my style, but something, something that I referenced in terms of like, say, the back vent, okay? Now, this is an incredibly rare car coat, really simple, 1920s probably, 20s to 30s, and this is uh, 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 what we would call a Canadian car coat, I believe, and uh, from the velvet lining, that this is at, made for Eaton's Canada. So uh, Eaton's was one of the oldest and original uh, catalog stores. In fact, uh, they put on the first sort of Christmas parade and then Macy's copied Eaton's. Eaton's was probably bigger than a lot of the American chain stores in its earliest days. And as you can see with the Canadian car coat, they have these very simple flaps on this single breasted coat. Two vertical pockets, simple flaps. These vertical pockets are not welted on both sides. It's one single welt, right? And uh, three big buttons. And then a very similar sleeve to what I have on my Canuck. So uh, I liked the simplicity of this with the three buttons. I really like the sort of W style collar, but we were not trying to build a single breasted coat. We were trying to build a double breasted coat. So that would be your classic Canadian 1920s car coat. The pockets would be the closest reference to the Chinook. Now let's look at a very, very rare single-breasted American four-side car coat, okay? So that, this is a very, very rare American uh, car coat. And I believe that if we had the label here, which I don't see, but I do believe, and I could be wrong, I believe it's a, a Hercules or a Penny Sterling car coat from the liner. Now what you get with the American single-breasted version, again, you get this great collar, but it's far more exaggerated than the Canadian version. You get the great pocket with double welting, but as you can see, over time, that pocket starts to tear without the reinforcement stitching. So our little triangle speaks to that. You get the very simple cuff with just a decorative flap here that doesn't actually do anything, quite frankly. Uh, there's a single button, there's no other button to shrink that down to, so that's just decorative. And again, the single lovely pocket flap. With the American cut, you get a little more shape in the body and a little more shape in the collar, and that's what makes this jacket so uh, so beautiful. Um, we also have uh, a very simplistic back, no expansion gusset, and a really nice uh, shape shape to the body so it's tight fitting, right? So a tight fitting car coat is very interesting because they tend to fall in either a very loose fitting car coat shape, sort of, or like a very tight fitted one, kind of like a pea coat. So, uh, here is another excellent example of a very rare early American, and this is much closer to the Chinook, double-breasted car coat. Again, you see three big buttons with the top chin, and this has a, if you, if you close this up, has a very similar collar to a classic European collar. So just imagine the Chinook with this collar, however, this traveling down and creating a shawl, again, two flaps, uh, a, a, a more functional uh, 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 cuff flap. And again, this is a very, very, very rare Sterling JC Penny. You can see from the label, super rare uh, uh, car coat. Uh, you, you'll rarely ever see these anywhere. They had beautiful lighting, itchy, but beautiful. And of course this one fits me, but I will never wear it. So, absolutely closer to the Chinook. Uh, again, uh, double welted, uh, double stitched, but no reinforcement on the pocket. And if you notice the stitching, 
you know, when people manufactured these, they were incredible craftspeople, but they were not uh, seeking perfection in the stitch work. They were seeking construction perfection. So you can see there's overstitching, but you can see the very fine stitching. You can see that when the stitching locks, it's not absolutely perfect. You can see this is a very early buttonhole machine. So it's, uh, it's, it's pearl stitched, but there's no gimp, right? And this sort of ends probably a singer, I imagine. This is more for machine nerds than me. And, um, you know, the parallel stitching is reasonably parallel. This has not migrated over time because of age. That's how it was made when it started. But, you know, they weren't using double needle machines. They were doing what we do, which is two single needle machines. And you can see, for example, when they double stitched the armholes on this beautiful jacket, they overstitched the entire length and they did not go run over the uh, armhole exactly. And that's part of the beauty of some of these vintage jackets is that they were just so well made, but they were not, you know, these were not designed for uh, people who were OCD. They were designed for people that wanted a beautiful coat that functioned and kept them warm and didn't disintegrate because they would cost about a week's salary. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, JC Penny Sterling. And you can see that of all the coats, this is the closest we get to the Chinook. And last but not least, just for an example, this is a, a Swedish uh, uh, military coat, flight coat, if you will. These were made from the 20s all the way to the 50s in Sweden and are, are, are a classic, classic coat. This is a later model. And if you see or imagine the shape of the collar here, so this is the classic European collar, which is just this sort of very simple uh, single pointed collar that you would see in almost every European, for example, uh, military coat from World War II. Uh, we'll, we'll refrain from whether they were Axis, Ally, or neutral. But um, essentially our Chinook is the equivalent of that in a shawl collar. So if you took those points and you folded it under, that's the European reference, right? That's the inference of a, a sort of European style. And with if you order the removable collar, you get that very European American crossover look. And that's why I designed it. So one of the things, one of the values that you get when you're ordering a bespoke jacket from us is literally you're getting my decades of design. And there may be people out there that do sort of like facsimiles of what we do. They may, they may have the perfect stitching, but they don't have the whole package. They don't have the design. They don't have the pattern. They don't have the construction knowledge. And, and, and they, quite frankly, they don't have the ethical framework. They don't have the team. They don't have a lot of the things we have. If you ever want to get into it with me about what I'm doing and why and how, watch my videos or just call me, which most anybody can do because my cell phone number is out there. Remember, please like, subscribe to this, subscribe to my Instagram, join up on my Facebook group, follow my personal Instagram if you want, but share this stuff in your social media so I can get more people interested in what I'm doing and pass on this knowledge before I drop dead of something because like basically there aren't that many people that are that obsessed and are willing to share it and if you if you guys like this I will just keep doing it as best I can I'll slowly share my collection and the things I've learned and the people I've talked to and crazy stories and 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 opal and pearl and my team so like it subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank